Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, which we're playing as that Western Russian Regency. So, we got a couple comments to go through, and we'll talk about this one just a little bit. So, the first comment that I want to address is that some people don't like it when I just spend as much as I possibly can, especially early on when I get the economy tab open, because we do get more debt. And I understand, I was like that before as well, but at this point, because I know where we're headed, most likely, I want to invest as much as possible now so that we can slash stuff later on. In the end, we will be able to sla we will slash the budget and stuff like that. So, uh, the next comment I want to address that that was quite a few comments was whether we should offer or accept Finland's offer of conditional surrender. Do we accept or refuse? And overall, the comments all basically said at the time of this recording, refuse, and we shall refuse, and we shall push as hard as we can into Finnish territory. Push, 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 and hopefully we can do very well. Actually, just go ahead and shore, shore up the line a little bit more that way. Thank you very much. And another comment was, someone was asking if we can actually actually find the Tsarevich, the regent, in 1967s or 1960s or even 1970s broken up Russia. Well, that's the goal, and hopefully we can find him. And I say that with a smile on my face. Oh god, why did you want to get encircled? What the heck? Oh god, no. Oh, you got encircled, you big dum-dums. Uh, can you get down here? Can you actually... You might actually be able to win, huh? Cool, if you can get down there, you might be able to... Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, the Finns are going to pay for this one. I don't have a ton of divisions. Oh, they're going to pay. If I lose this division, oh, I'm going to go push straight into Helsinki, and we're going to set up some uh, monarchist camps, we'll call them. Force the attack. Force it. They're going to die. Good. Yeah, you're going to die as well here, too. Actually, you support the attack, because I don't think they have any way out of here. Which is a very good thing. Alright, looking pretty good. Finns can't do anything now. Hey, look at that. You got your, you became encircled. Oh, no. Whatever will we do? Kill the Finns off. Ooh, civilian budget boost. Don't mind if we do. Actually, I'm going to cut military spending for now. Even though I, we're still at war, I think we'll probably be okay. We'll probably be okay. Peace conference? Is it between us and them, or is that someone else? Ah, Caucasian has been cut off. They offer unconditional surrender. Diplomats representing the Finnish government have approached us, offering immediate surrender once again. This time, they have fully conceded to our demands and are offering to hand over Romansk, Onega, and all of Karelia east of the Puri. This would restore the border to its position in 36 and bring millions of Russians back into the fold. With our rightful territory returned to us and all questions of military supremacy definitely settled by our route of the Finnish armed forces, we have nothing else to gain from the war. It has been a triumphant return of the Russian nation to the world stage with the reclamation of a viable region and a decisive victory over a foreign rival to make it all the better. Let us make peace with the Finns and turn our attention to the east. Karelia was just the beginning. Soon all of Russia will be united with under our flag. What can, what would happen if I took up Helsinki? We've got a couple days here. I want to see... we got 12 days. Appeal to the church? So, I'm not, so with this, I think we don't want to speed it up too much. If the clock strikes midnight... Then that's not good. So we maybe want to slow it down as much as possible. Oh, we have more political power here. Construction, worker training. Eh, that one's kind of weak. I don't go like that one that whole lot. Ooh, industrial equipment. Yeah, let's, let's save it for 75. Loyalty in mind. Great. Oh, oh, whoopsie. Oh, no. Are we not at war anymore? Oh, that sucks. Army professionals in monthly game plus one. Russians are naturally hardy specimens of superior strength and agility, but there's always room for improvement. The innate superiorities of a race require some coaxing to fully manifest themselves. This is the best achieved through a combination of martial education and intense physical training. Taking notes from the SS, our recruits will be put through the most grueling, brutal, merciless training programs their generals can conceive. A pure-blooded Russian can endure any level of human suffering imaginable and come out stronger. Even the slightest amount of subhuman blood will cause them to wash out, but that's not a great loss, in fact. It only makes the regents work easier. The blood always knows. In their thoughts, Captain Chernov tapped his pen idly for a moment, then circled another name on the list of men in the second platoon. Private Chedenko, yes. He seemed suspicious enough. Thick eyebrows, dark eyes, curly hair. Definitely something semantic about him. Then there was a pander of Polnikov, a good sergeant, but an ex eurasianist He claimed to have only followed Gumilov out of ignorance, but could a man of his age over truly change? Chernov doubted it and circled his name too. An hour later, his Okhrana contact, Kamarov, finally arrived. Apologies, Chernov. Uh, Chernoff, as he said as he entered. 
terribly busy tonight. He lit up a Makorka cigarette and sat himself on the side of the captain's desk. So, got enough names for me? Chernoff noticed that there was blood under the officer's fingernails, but simply nodded and handed him the list. That's the lot, I think, he said, lighting up a smoke of his own. Always difficult with the men's source from border towns. Too many Mongols out there, if you ask me. Oh, of course, agreed Kamarov. Bolshevik uh, C-words didn't even bother keeping an eye on the peasants, and you know what they're like. They'll F up anything with two legs. Sometimes more I hear. The pair shared a chuckle before Kamarov stubbed out his cigarette and rose to his feet again. Anyways, I'd love to stay for a drink, Captain, but there's five other companies to review before the night's done. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. Don't worry, I'll see what I can do about getting you some fresh meat. Sure enough, just nodded and smiled as the Okhrana officer strode from his office. Terrible business, ceaseless, but if that was a price to avoid another betrayal of the solidarity. A soldiery. The same sort of man who had abandoned him for Suslov all those years ago. Then he'd be happily pay for it a thousand times over. Do not weep for them, for their faith was not sufficient. Oh god, the clock speeds up. Mm. You want to play these games? Oh, no, I wanted to kill them off. I was so close. We were so close, guys. Oh, we have to probably do this too. There's a lot of population around here. It's quite a few. Well, maybe not in these little small little sections, but that's okay. Well, since we got them back, can I... For that area? Russian victory in the Northern War. We've crushed the stubborn Finns. Hallelujah. Do we get anything else from that? No? Okay, well, whatever. We're on the march again. Hopefully. Strategic cycles? Cool. Mm, that'd be nice, but... More breakthrough? Yes. More max planning? Yes. Yes, please. Seriously, I guess we don't get a court, huh? Record on Nega, of course. So these areas, I can record that area too. Area too. Okay, so okay, it finally did record. Okay, for some reason I thought it wouldn't do that, but it will. Oops, my bad. Uh, point eight seven. Just had some water. Got some coffee here too. And how many divisions do these guys have? Because no matter what the cost, we got to get more divisions. These martial law, good, I guess, for them. Up, oh, we need at least. I would say 20. We're currently making two at a time. Actually, really three with those guys, so that would be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Nice. And then I'm going to try Clockwork's appeal to the church. They have safeguard his word. Now they shall safeguard the regent. Strength and body, good. I don't want to do purity and soul because that actually... The speed... It speeds up. Things speed up. Heralds of the Empire. Black Wings of... Bob, breaking the ways. This doesn't seem like there's a lot of benefit going down this way. Not a lot. And we actually lose quite a bit of manpower. Officers for acclamation. Lessons. Uh, no law about the regent. We Army professionalism actually goes down. But then, yeah. Mm, uplift the system. Clock slows down. Security service. Security law to security service. Reduces administrative strain. I kind of like that. Absolute purity. Ooh. Burgundian system goes up. Hmm, array of light. We receive $10 million. No, we don't. A harsh glare. Ooh. Yeah, we wept. Okay, okay. Anything else here? Administer the stream. Let's do uplift the system. A blessing has come to this world collecting the black guise of national socialism. This system, based on absolute unquestioned dictatorial, dictatorial authority, has been best exemplified in the German outpost known as them as Kalkasin. Of course, these lands are rightfully Russian, but the German ruler, Rex Commissar Josias, has forged them into something truly remarkable a state where subhumans are systematically oppressed and exterminated for the benefit of their racial superiors. What an ingenious creation! God himself acts through the Josias, showing us a path to reclaim Russia's glory. Through proper application of the Burgundian system, altered to suit our needs, the rule of the regent and the Tsarevich will be unassailable. At the time, at the same time, it allows to cleanse Russia of impure races, forever securing it for the true master race. This is getting kind of wild. Just a little bit. Cool. What about construction? Wow. Hmm. One, two. That's not bad. We got almost two lines going. Not bad. Let's see. 60%, 68. Oh, 100. Yeah. Hey, we got up to 5. Nice. Very good. And you know what? I want to see what happens if you consider our destiny. Is that bad? Maybe we should not do that? I have no idea. Searching for answers. The first invocation. Tsarvich Alexei Nikolaevich Romanov, blessed child of the martyrs and the rightful heir of all the Russias, your servant calls, I implore you, heed my prayers. 
Tabritsky waited in darkness. Not a single light illuminated his private chapel. The clouds were thick tonight, and not even the faintest moonbeam shone through the high windows. After several minutes, he heard distant whispers and a presence on either side of him. He felt a mild pang of disappointment. It seemed that Tsarevich Alexei de Dayed dined only to set send a pair of angels in his steed. Uh, quickly dismissing such selfish emotions, the regent raised his hands and spoke again. Greetings, servants of the Lord. I humbly ask you that you infuse my soul with light, that I may see through the shadows that bar my way. The whispers grew louder, though Tabritsky could not comprehend the language. Somehow, he still understood their meaning. Yes, he muttered, sweat dripping down his forehead despite the cold. Golden lines flashed up in the darkness before him, bright as lightning, but emitting no light upon the surroundings. Yes, my lords, I see them. It shall be so. Time's waters are a babbling brook, turbulent and lively. God, the designer, his mechanisms be beckon. The cock, the clock slows down. Oh, ooh. <laughs> the clock slows down. Only seven, roughly seven billion in debt. That's okay, or seven billion in debt. I should say every year. Help out the system. That's good. Go ahead and treat it. We need it. And we should do the next one as well. Reform the Ochrana. We are locked in an eternal struggle with forces too terrible for godly men to truly comprehend. The world sinks deeper and deeper into the muck of degeneracy with each passing day. Only the actions of a few brave men, such as the regent, keep it from being swallowed up by darkness. But the regent cannot bear the burden alone. He needs good, reliable servants, trustworthy men, pure of heart and intent. As providence has shown us through the Bulgarian system, only a legion of such men, backed with the iron will of the regent, are capable of maintaining order. The Okhrana, ris risen from the dead, shall be Russia's shadow-clad bulwark against all evil. Uh, cost goes up a little bit more, but we get more daily political power. Reduces administrative strain, which is a, actually a pretty good thing to do, so. And there goes Africa, but it's Africa. Wow, look at that. 5.75 a month? 9 a month for army professionalism? Yes, please. Mm, not bad, not bad, not bad. Cool. Basic artillery? Don't mind if we do. We're going to have the best artillery. We're going to hit them as hard as we possibly can and destroy all enemies' manpower. Approve to the church. I want to try this one. I don't know what's going to happen, so. The clock works. Oh. The most holy church. Tabritsky sat on the pews, having finished up his evening prayers more quickly than usual. The church was as usual, empty of everyone but himself. No one could be permitted to stand in his presence, especially not when the sky danced before him, and he spoke to the Tsarevich. No man of the cloth would ever understand. He knew that they still thought of themselves above him. The arrogance of the priest was boundless, and the propensity for betrayal well known. After all, it had been the priest who led the treacherous workers to their deaths in 1905. Even then, the Judeo-Bolshevik puppeteers had been working to destroy the empire. He shivered at the thought. He had remained loyal to his faith, but what of the Orthodox Church? They were still just men and didn't understand God like he did for them. Religion was all rules and ritual. Tabritsky knew that faith had to be followed with action. No amount of prayer could ever save Russia. God would surely favor him, but only if he first proved himself worthy by great deeds. Tabritsky rose and seed steeled his mind as whispers of angels drifted to his ears again. No one would stand in the way of Holy Russia or the restoration of its true monarch, neither heathen nor Pharisee. Only I can beckon... Only I can be the rock of the church. What did he see when he rose once more? The clock speeds up. Okay, so... Both of those either speed it up or slow it down for you. And here it is. Our Tesla is in the distance. Midnight might, must never be allowed to come. Oh man! I, like, as you can tell, I've I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I haven't tried this, practiced this on my own. So whatever you're seeing here, I'm doing for exactly the first time. I've not watched anyone else play as Daddy Tabby, but mm, I'm here to learn just like all y'all. This guy's not bad, just a little, little lukewarm, that's all. Mm. Cool. And let's do this one, chain, supply chain reinforcements. Actually, within our focus tree, we might get some more land doctrine benefits. Tear down the failures of virtuous education. Uh, let's see. Anything here for land doctrine? Yes, there's three bonuses, so we're done with land doctrines first. I'm glad I looked at that. Instead, land doctrine, of course. Artillery, we're doing that. Armor. We would like to use some of this stuff, maybe even APCs, but I'm thinking maybe helicopters too. Hmm. How many main battle tanks do we have? Can we actually support this? IFVs, APCs. We have a few APCs actually. Eh, we might be able to. Let's at least get this one first. And then maybe we'll focus on helicopters. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we can get them. Maybe we can't. But we'll see what happens. The Khrana has been created. 
and we grab this one for more army XP and more stability. The sinful people of Rush have been afflicted such by decades of Judeo-Bolshevik rule that they no longer understand what is best for them. The region's laws are but suggestions to be to the misguided. Only the language most of them are able to comprehend is force. To carry out the solemn duty of impressing the region's divine mandate upon the people, a new army must be raised. There will be no motley band of soldiers, polluted by sin and earthly desires, but in order of the brave, the strong and the pure, they shall be the region's strong arm, or right, strong right arm, dispensing justice with bullet and bayonet to the traitors with undesirables within our realm. The lists. Kamarov was a former NKVD man, but whatever loyalty he had to the red flag had died with the Union. After 20 years of socialism, what did Russia to show for it? Backwards industry, a feeble government, and a military that could barely handle a few Finnish peasants. He was a rational fellow. He had studied history, seen through the communist myths that obscured the truth of monarchism. It was for the precise reason that he had received the region's sacred trust, and now stood before a row of fresh Okhrana recruits, his recruits, waiting for their first assignments. He stood forward, and handed a small slip of paper to the first man in line. The first, the wife first, he said, in the smoker's growl. The man's face remained blank as he nodded, took the order and departed. Kamarov moved along the line, passing out the death sentences, one at a time. Just the children, so they get the message. That one's for heresy, so burn the place down when you're done. Hang this one, publicly. Find a lamppost or something. These three are all in the same hostel, so you can do it by yourself. When all the officers had departed, Kamarov produced a final death sentence and smiled as he reread it in the dim light. It was going to be a very productive and enjoyable night. It's wonderful when your job is also your hobby. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. Well, as long as they enjoy their work, right? I guess. Well, maybe not for the people on the receiving end, but, you know. Oh, yeah, we've got plenty of guns now. Make sure we got enough artillery, actually. And tanks. Yeah. We won't have the industry for planes, but you know what? We're actually making a good amount of planes. I mean, helicopters. We won't have an industry for helicopters, I should say. I think the next one will be... I love infrastructure. I really do, but... I'm probably going to go with foreign instructors. I We're going to maximize this as much as possible. I want to get a professional army or a really Spartan discipline. Because... It doesn't make any sense for us not to do that because we are using the Burgundian system, which is based sort of on Spartan ideals. So, we've got to go there as fast as possible. There we go. Beautiful. Hire foreign instructors. Yes, please. Next up. Eyes in every house. Tragically, few Russians understand the importance of, or even the nature of the region's holy work. Unwittingly inspired by the Jewish enemy, they shy away from God's light and conceal the secrets beneath a veil of lies. They're away from sight. They fester and rot, spreading a foul contagion that poisons the very soul of Russia. Fortunately, there remains a sliver of light in even the most benign souls, or blighted souls, or whatever it is. With the clink of coins and the clink of a cocked gun, the people of Russia can be lured or nudged onto the correct path. With a little persistence, all the dark secrets of the lowly shall be revealed, and the regent's faithful servants will see them expunge. Wiretapping. Oh boy. It's going to cost us even more. The clock slows down, and we get little birds. Good, good, good. 7.4 billion. Oh, I just saw that one. I want this one. Oh. Build, build, build more and more civilian factories. Build up that civilian spending and stuff. That'd be glorious. Gotta love coffee. And you get more stability, even though we don't need it anymore right now. Looking not too bad. Military austerity. Nope. Boost it up. Oh, look at that. An opera can be recruited. Not this guy, because he's politically connected. Roman Leonid. Leonid is the man for the job. Well, eyes in every house. And prove on our knowledge. <clears throat> More cost, so be it. <clears throat> Loyal, observant watchmen are a blessing to the regent, but they are still human, still imperfect. We cannot grow complacent in our trust of them, for the flesh is weak and the human heart fills or filled to bursting with sin. Only the grandest or greatest among us are truly safe from the devil's temptations. But the machine has none of these flaws. Steel, copper, and plastic might corrode, but they will never betray us or fail in their duty. Wiretaps, surveillance cameras, hidden microphones, all these marvels of technology will grant the regent a sliver of the Lord's own omniscience. omniscience and omnipresence. So armed, their sacred peace is assured. And France goes into isolation. An expected shakeup for the players of the game. Wait, what? Is this... what? For, what? Is this kind of meta? Cool. Little birds. And don't know whether it's the right thing for him, Anna. As for her, the woman's side. The right thing, Jenya. You haven't seen what they're doing. This is just to a boy born with a couple of extra toes. Grisha will be found out the moment he's asked to speak in school. I won't let her boy die just because he's a bit slow. The man spoke again, perhaps a bit humbled. Yes, Anna, I know we cannot let them find out about him, but we could just 
Well, not Santa in his school. People have taught their children themselves all the time not long time ago, so how hard can it be? What about when we're gone? He can't live without us again, yeah? The floorboards creaked under Esper's light feet, and the voices stopped. She froze, not even daring to breathe. Grisha, the woman called up. Is that you, love? Thinking quickly, Esper clicked off the tape recorder and slipped into the pocket of her dressing gown before gently opening the couple's door. It's just me, Mommy, she said, her face concealed in the darkness of the hallway. I had a bad dream. Can I sleep with you and Daddy? Of course we can, honey, said Gennady, his smile visible in the moonlight. Come in. Esper closed the door behind her and slipped off her gown, blissing at the foot of the bed before climbing in between her parents and curling up. You have to learn to face your fears sooner or later, Esper, her mother chided as she rolled over to face her. Ten is too old to be hiding away from us, or with us. Don't you think? Esper said nothing. She simply closed her eyes and thought of how much light easier life would be for her parents without Grisha weighing them down. From the mouths of babes, oh boy. Oh boy, that is not really ideal, I would say. Not really ideal. At least no one's trying to spy on us for now. Hmm. Okay, so we consider our destiny. Okay, cool. So if we do that, that would slow stuff down. Oh, the clock has struck the first hour. We're retreating backwards along its track. And I remember how a clock looks. There's 12 hours, and you don't want to get to the 12th hour. No siree. Worker training. Yeah, we could probably do that. Oh, but you know, resource efficiency gain. More infrastructure. Side increase GDP. Yeah, no. It's not good enough. Construction is going very, very nicely. And then, honor the blessed regent. Some place their trust in money. <clears throat> Some place their trust in weapons of war. Some, wretched beyond all others, place their trust in the iconoclasm of ideology we of all the world's nations know better. We, the Russians, place their trust in Sergei Tabritsky, blessed regent of his imperial majesty, Tsarevich Alexei Romanov, true heir to the Russian Empire, anointed with the blood of the unbelievers. His reign is divinely mandated by the Lord God and eternally sanctioned in the name of Christ. The Lord has chosen him as his vessel and the harbinger of the empire's return to glory, carrying forth the eternal light of the third Rome. Only the regent has been imparted with the Lord's own wisdom and power. Only he can truly claim legitimacy over all the Russias. So it shall be until the Tsarevich is found and restored to his rightful throne. I wish we'll do that one next. We're just going to keep doing this because artillery is just so good. I love artillery. Hey, another division. Great. Keep making them. And actually, I'm just going to go do this. Boom. Are right, there you go. Good. Anna, the blessed region. Suffer not the mutant. Give him back, the woman shrieked, gasping and slapping at the Okrana officer standing in the doorway. Behind him, Grisha screamed his wordless terror as he was dragged down the hallway to the front door in the old German truck outside. Give me back my boy. The officer scowled behind his bal balaclava and shoved her with his PPSH. Enough whining. Consider yourself lucky that we didn't take the other one, too. He's harmless, bellowed her husband, tears flowing down his face, bursting with rage. He's never hurt anyone. What do you want with him? Their daughter clung to his leg, her expression blank. She hadn't made a sound since the black uniform officer had kicked in the door two minutes prior. He's an animal, near the officer. A rather beast. You'd have to put him down yourself if you had any decency. You bastardino, roared the husband, and making a lunge for the officer, he was met with the wooden stock of the SMG cracking against his nose, breaking it, and knocking him to the floor. His wife screaming in the distance, or is in distress, and rushed to his side. The daughter moved to his kneel, dutifully beside him, but remained silent. <clears throat> Change of plans, Yevgeny called another voice from outside the room. Extreme case, looks like. The officer racked the bolt on his PPSH, understood neutralizing suspects. He leveled the weapon, squeezing the trigger, and held it in down until the scream stopped. Without family, who are we? Ooh. Oh boy. Maybe we should uh, consider our destiny. Yeah, to slow it down maybe a little bit. Oh man, I know in the background and just in the numbers, it, the numbers are speeding up. What do they mean, Mason? The numbers. Or Sergey, what do the numbers mean? <laughs> oh no. Uh, we always out of resources. But which resources are we always, always out of? Rubber. So even if we extract more, it won't even matter. Yeah, we could do this. We might do this one later to get level two. And then if you come down here, you can actually if you go this way, you get more rubber from each one. But let's not do that for now. Support equipment. Oh, yeah, that actually might be pretty beneficial to do. Helicopter engines sound like a lot of fun. Let's keep doing this stuff because this directly impacts us basically right now. So that would be probably pretty good to do. <clears throat> good. Hey, we got three lines of 20. Nice. Very nice, actually. <clears throat> Propaganda programs, not campaigns, but programs. That's yeah, not bad, but meh. Come on, not, never enough. Nascent industrial base should be done soon enough. And Africa's on fire, but what do you expect? <clears throat> Imperial artwork, huh? 
The cult of Tsavich. That's even imperial artwork because we get more political power. Russia's culture once appeared in inherited of Rome's legacy has been polluted to the point that the region weeps to even behold it. A thousand different and equally degenerate influences now slowly every form of art in our beautiful nation. Worst of all are the idolatrous and perversive scrawlings of the Bolsheviks venerating the proletarian rabble and their abominable atheistic state above all else. True art, directed from the halcyon years of the Romanovs, is the only acceptable expression of Russian culture. All Bolshevik filth must be scourged away with fire, along with the scribblings of the vile writers like Pasternak and the Jewish infiltrator. I did read that he was Jewish, but I was like, just looking at his um, bio when I was looking at the beginning of a campaign. So, for the mine, for mine is a glory. All glory to the regent. I proclaim the poster. Hail he who walks in God's footstep. It happened almost overnight. Gone from the stage of the town hall was the old portrait of Lenin, along with the unfortunate mayor who had dared to hang it up in its place, framed and nailed in place, with the face of Regent Taboritsky, his cold blue eyes staring down upon the simple townsfolk. Similarly, someone had hung a framed photo of him above the mayor's desk. That same afternoon, a truck rolled into town with armed men sitting in that flatbed. As they climbed down and took up positions, the driver stood in the cab and held aloft both a megaphone and portrait of the regent. Subjects of the regency, he boomed, startling the elderly, elderly folk. Take this opportunity, prove your loyalty to the blessed regent. Once you are all you all welcome the faces of treason and atheism into your homes, repent and hang high the visage of your rightful sovereign. Nobody moved a muscle. Instead, the villagers simply milled around, confused and slightly nervous. One of the guards racked the bolt on his AK, and the driver spoke again. Furthermore, I hereby announce that all regular inspections of private homes will be conducted by the Imperial Shermaliki. Subjects of the regents found to be suspect of suspect loyalty, will be submitted or subjected to extreme corrective measures. One by one, the villagers moved for, to, forward to collect their portraits. From that day forth, each and every one of them would sleep under the regent's steely gaze. Such loyal subjects. I love it. Loyalty. What more could you ask for? Loyalty is great. Alright, so, so we have enough political power. We could save it for more stuff later on. Actually, we could probably use this one just because we will need more manpower later on. And actually, minus 10% consumer goods is not bad. Mm, you know what? I'm going to do this one. I'm going to finally do it. We're going to lose money, lose some civilian factories, but we do get some more resources. But I really want that infrastructure. It's only three more infrastructure, but it's all around the place. You know what? I'm going to consider our destiny, maybe, again. Oh, can we do this enough times? Because that one slows it down, right? That death of Puyi. Cool. Drone entry. The, the days of visitation are come. The days of repaying are come. Know ye, O Israel, that the prophet was foolish, the spiritual man was mad, for the multitude of thy iniquity, and the multitude of thy madness. Hosea 9, 7. <clears throat> One was unfortunately disposed, or indisposed recently. It appears that I was taken ill, that I have little re recollection of the past few several days, and my physician is insistent that I rest. Treasonous talk, treasonous. Of course it's not treason when what you are writing. I had to sleep for a time, the night and dream were long, there were no lights, this sky alluded to me. Though I searched long for its silken weave, becoming harder to pierce the piece that lines together, it seems it's meaningless, you fool. I don't understand, I can't read the lines. The coals, the darkness, the gleaming altar, all lie cold and empty. It's cold, it's so cold. Clock slows down, just in case, just in case. We still struck the first hour, but hopefully we have enough time. And they'll do the cult of Tzavich. <clears throat> Whatever Tzavich Alexei is hiding, surely he is living a most blessed life. Raised by gentle, caring men of God, he has certainly been instilled with all the virtues of a great and holy ruler, more than that. He carries the sanctified blood of his martyred father along with, within his veins, setting him down above all other men. Hey, Zimbabwe is on fire. What else is new? <clears throat> and... Even among the racial superior of the superior of the world, he must be the most exemplary specimen. All the people of Russia should know this, from the lowliest peasant to the highest noble, the Tsarevich is a sacred prince, promised directly to our region by the Lord. He shall be as glorious and perfect in form as and mind as Christ himself, King of kings and ruler of rulers, our golden child, our blessed prince of longing. All of Russia shall know your glory from till now till judgment day. Your region shall ensure that none ever heed the voice of Satan and defy you as a Jew, Tartar, Lenin did, by enshrining the region's unworthy earthly authority. The stage shall forever be set to, for you to assume the throne and per perpetual unquestioned peace. Yes, please. Hey, look at that. Oh, it's actually in a tank. Uh, I'm actually going to combine you for now. We actually made a tank division. Go figure. Imperial standards. With a fury unseen since the Reformation, iconoclasm, our iconoclasm yeah, has once more taken hold in the world. Heralded by the blast of dynamite and the roar of bonfires, fingernails tear at the posters glued to the wall, axes hack apart heathen altars. <clears throat> And portraits of false rulers are consigned to the flames. Exhorted onwards and threatened by the Sturmoviki, the subjects of the region are cleansing the image of Holy Russia. When the iconoclastic fury subsided, the fires will turn from destruction to creation, forging new golden edifices for the Orthodox Church. Pens and typewriters will speak of the region's glory and print pains 
paeans to the Lord. <clears throat> Where soulless concrete once stood in the shape of monuments to workers, false monarchs, and ideologues, stone and marble will rise once more. True art and architecture, embodying centuries of tradition, returns to the motherland. This time it shall stand for a thousand years. Glory to be to God. Call me Berg system. <clears throat> I kind of want to do call me Bergy system? Or Berg sis. Or Berg. Yeah, I thought it was a Berg A. But Berg sis. Berg sis. Let's just glory be to God. Let's make it simple. <clears throat> And for some reason, my voice is cracking now. Hmm. <clears throat> my apologies about that. My voice is going bye-bye right now. What other research do we have? Base bleed, don't mind if we do. Still training, still training. Yep, the new guys, good. Even the tanks are training, which is kind of okay. Maybe not ideal. Now we need quite a bit of artillery still. And tanks. Production. Looking not bad. Let's go to three. There we go. <clears throat> a little better. England at, and Wales at war. And Iowa blaze once more. Well, good enough for us. Mm, how's the trading going on? Let's see. Mechanical plant. Light trading. Eh, that's fine with us. Substantial. Less output. I don't like that. Let's, can we lower the black market trading? Because we don't have stuff here yet, so. Luxury trading, black market arms trading, yeah. We want more output. Just don't get to the second hour, or I'll feel a little bit more nervous, I guess you could you could say, but not really. We have 19 divisions, the cult of Tsarevich. Good. A trustworthy court. Every Tsar must have his court, so must regions, logically. We have accumulated a vast number of devoted followers over the decades from wizened white emigres to youthful radicals bursting with vigor. The true path illuminated so many years ago by the regent Taboritsky is now walked by thousands of the faithful. Yet the situation is not as it should be. We've heard disturbing rumors from our little birds who keep watch on the amb ambitious and the powerful. It seems that certain inclinations begin to take root recently. Inclinations towards dissent, heresy, even treachery, unfortunate but villainous courtiers, or courtiers have been... Ever the lot of good-hearted rulers. Adjustments shall be made so that Tsarevich Alexei will never face such a threat. Once the fate of traitors become known, fear shall permanently cow those who aspire to follow in their footsteps. More stability and reduce administrative strain, the imperial cult. There's increasingly little room for the icons of traditional, of traditional saints in the churches of Holy Russia. <clears throat> Not even the blessed regent would dare to commit the sin of diminishing them, but his regime has other priorities, the center of attention of late. It is always the same, the great icon of Tsarevich Alexei Nikolaevich Romanov, commissioned by Regent Tabersky and elevated to a place of pride in the church. There were protests, cries of idolater, but even men of God have limits to their courage. <clears throat> In time, all of Russia will venerate the blessed child of its murdered Tsar. When Alexei is found and assumes his rightful throne, the people will kneel to him, as they should God's own representative on earth. Our immortal sovereign will come, and he will reign over Russia for all time. He will come. And there goes the whales. Bye, whales. <clears throat> More. And we actually get more political power doing this, too. We only have 11 billion in terms of deficit. That's all. Hey, 5.7, not bad. Not bad. I just want to go to war, man. Caucus Anarchy? Cool. Maybe we'll cut construction eventually, but not yet. I think we got three going now. That'll be good. Overthrown by Arab administrators. Cool. Good for you. If I can slow stuff down, I want to slow the clock down as much as possible. So, Ooh, we'll probably do import heavy machinery next. That'll be good. Good Christian nation must have a poverty relief system. Heavy machinery. Don't mind if we do. Don't mind if we do. We can probably close that for now. Base bleed, not bad. We'll make our enemies bleed. 15% more soft attack. That is so good. So good. Main battle takes. We gotta really focus on that once we're done with artillery, of course. Actually, everything else here? Nope. Let's read the next one. The fall of the favorite. The region walks in Christ's footsteps, lighting the way for all of Russia to follow. He is no Messiah, but he does strive to emulate one. He is not surprising them that another man would stare drive to emulate Jesus, Judas. Piotr Shablesky Bork, an old and dear friend, has become a most problematic element in the imperial court. Speaking with the forked tongue of Satan, he is dared to confront the region with concerns about his increasingly erratic behavior. Could the machinations of Beelzebub, Beelzebub could be any more obvious? This is a prelude to a betrayal most foul, no doubt. Shabelsky Bark has already had his 30 pieces of silver. All he needs now is a rope of straw that he might be sent, blue faced and choking, to the same eternal prison as his inter infernal master. In his place, a younger, more godly man shall be elevated to become the right hand of the regent, the spirit of Cain. Oh boy. 
Man, Tabritsky, he's doing the Lord's work. Well, I guess his interpretation of the Lord's work. Ooh. I want to see how far we can go with this. Ooh, at 202026. 20, Not bad. As of Babylon. As of Babylon is a newly released fiction book detailing the alternative universe in which the Third Reich lost its struggle against the decadent capitalist West and the mongrel states of Russia after a beloved Fuhrer was shot or cut down by a sniper's bullet in 35. Written by Cornish author Anthony Beevor, Heirs of Babylon details the lives of the people living in divided Berlin, Londonium, and Alexandria, and Philadelphia, the new capital of the Americas. Much of the world is divided between the imperial dominion of Britannia, <clears throat> who reclaimed their traditional thrones in Germany and France, the United American Federation, whose border stretches from the Northern Pole to the Southern Pole, and the insidious pan Eurasian Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Ferdinand Featherston is an investigator, a Britannian detective with a license to kill and beholden only to her Britannic Majesty. Searching for his wife in Red Europe, he is swept up in a world by a shaking plot in Berlin. The chase takes him to America, France, Africa, and finally to Gibraltar in a series of daring escapes and high-speed gun battles. The crux of the novel's events is a Gibraltar missile crisis, a tense situation or nuclear standoff between the Dominion, Dominion <clears throat> and the Pan-Eurasian Union, while the United Federation seeks to undermine both sides and provoke a war for their own purposes. The novel ends in uncertainty, <clears throat> with things massing across the Gibraltar border and the American fleet refusing to answer hails circling like vultures. Will Ferdinand use the Dominion's most powerful weapons? Will he rescue the women he loves? What a childish fantasy. And he says Featherston, which I believe is the last name <clears throat> of the leader of the CSA in the Southern Victory mod, as well as the books by, I forget, by the guy who wrote, wrote that stuff, but that's the same last name. Cool. Consider Destiny. I, I want to keep doing that, but I'll do that once again once we... Speed it up again. So we'll save some political power for now. We only get 1.54 a day, which is actually quite a bit. Agricultural mechanization. You bet we will do that. Anything else here? Not yet. Follow the favorite. And then towards absolute purity. It is not enough for those who rule to be to be pure of heart. The lands of Russia are infested with a multitude of vermin, Jews, Tartars, Asiatics. These parasites suckle themselves on the lifeblood of the empire, growing fat and healthy at the expense of God's chosen people. No longer shall the noisum noisome presence of subhumans be tolerated in our holy empire. Time and again, they betrayed Russia, always pursuing the allure of wealth in itself, aggrandizement. After every betrayal, they beg and plead for their miserable lives, appealing to the good Christian morals of the rightful rulers. Many were thus deceived, but not the region. For all their faults, the Germans, guided by God, have shown us the way. With bullet and blades, fire and gas, we shall forever cleanse Russia of its enemies. More daily Burgundian support. <clears throat> and the spirit of Cain. Oh. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Pietor tried to keep himself from shivering as he stepped into Tabritsky's office and heard the door locked behind him. He was gripping the pocket pistol concealed in his jacket so tightly that the edges were biting into his palm. Tabritsky rose from behind his desk, a smile on his face. It wasn't reflected in his eyes there. Peter, or Peter, could only see a deep well of madness on the verge of brimming over. Peter, said Tabritsky, taking up a pair of filled vodka glasses as he approached. His graceful, measured movements belied the simmering insanity that Peter knew within to be him. Won't you join me for a drink? A transparent ploy. Peter didn't let his eye contact with Tabritsky drop. He shook his head, too anxious to answer. Tabritsky's smile vanished, replaced with a stone-faced, dead-eyed stare Pietro had known or seen in his nightmares. It was the same look that had graced his features when they dispatched Nabokov. The same as when he had first ordered chemical weapons unleashed, yet maybe eminence, Pietro began, forcing himself to relax slightly. I have... Everything happened at once. Peter instinctively jerked backwards as he saw the glasses drop to shatter on the polished floorboard. Tabritsky seemed to leap forwards, the glint of polished steel in his right hand. Peter let out a reflective shout of alarm as he tried to draw the pistol from within his jacket pocket, only for it to tumble with a clatter and a bang to the floor. All he could do now was throw his arms outwards towards Tabritsky, catching his knife arm at his wrist. Both men were old, creaking relics of, Russia, of a past, Russia past. But Peter was a weaker. Not even a second later, he felt something give in his elbows, and his knife drew closer. In that instant, what little courage had driven him evaporated, replaced only by gibbering and sensinant terror of his life. Sergei, 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 he screamed at the top of his lungs. Sergei, stop! Stop, Sergei, please! Just listen, just listen to me, Sergei. Despite his plea, no hint of mercy appeared in his friend's eyes. The gleaming point drew closer, spurred on by madman's strength. Pieter gritted his teeth, his eyes bulging as he tried to find some final reserve of strength in his old bones, and then he slipped. Something cold slid between Pieter's ribs. He fell first against the wall and then to the floor. As his vision tightened to a tunnel, the last thing he ever saw was a steadily spreading pool of his lifeblood edging towards his old friend's trembling boots. Goodbye, old friend. The clock strikes twice. The clock speeds up. Oh, crap. Um, consider our destiny, just in case. I struck the third... Oh, we're the third hour already. Slowly slipping towards... Oh, no, 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 no. The journal entry. And Samuel said, To all the people, surely you see him... Whom the Lord hath chosen, and there is none like him among the peoples. And all the people cried and said, God save the king, 1 Samuel 10.24. The reorganization of Holy Russia's framework continues 
space. Steady progress, no hesitation, no doubling back, lest we lose sight of the path. One expected more difficulties than one has thus encountered. After all, OVRI did not enjoy the same luxuries that Hitler did when the time came to assume power. We had no gullible civilian government that could be swayed to our side, nor did we have the full confidence of a large revanchist military. The greatest resistance had been from the same expected source. The Reds, who continued to assail us despite their defeat, it seemed that they have learned from some valuable lessons in obstinacy from their verminous masters. <coughs> No matter how hard one stomps down the boot and grinds them under heel, they somehow manage to return time and time again to torment Russia. This persistence is most concerning. The process of reorganization is only going to intensify with the passage of time, and the Regency cannot afford a continued assaults on its subjects. The Imperial Army must increase its efforts and smoke out the Jewish atheists before they can multiply number. Perhaps some gas. Oh boy. Uh, did that slow things down? I don't think I don't think it slowed it down. Oh no. Oh, oh, here we go. Okay, the journal entry. Lord, give thee dust for rain upon thy land, and let ashes come down from heaven upon thee, till thou be consumed. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 28-24. Something is wrong. I can't hear him. It was so recently that I heard the choirs of heaven reverberating within my skull. I would wake to the sounds of angels, but no longer. Now I wake to the creaking of the bed, brought about by my own thrashing in my sleep. I hear no bird song, no crackling of the fire, no quiet, illicit conversations between the guards who keep watch outside my door. There's only silence. There's only cold ash on the hearth. When I open the window, I hear only the howling wind and the distant thrum of factories. It does not fill the emptiness in my soul. It sickens me. Countless times have I tried to bear it, but it always ends the same way. The blessed, With the blessed region of the Holy Russian Empire hunched over his privy, voiding his stomach until nothing comes up but staring bile. Then once the heaving and choking stops, silence. Silence the, the and the creeping dread that trickles down my spine like ice water when I turn my mind to the Empire. Do I fear my creation? And I, I want to apologize for my speaking or reading events. It's not been very good in this episode. Sometimes it's not very good at all. But I do apologize that I could be speaking a little bit more clearly, I'll say. Yeah, a little bit more clearly. So, hey, 614, not bad. Yeah. This episode has been kind of wishy-washy with my speaking and pronunciations, I should say. Minorities are oppressed by the state. Wow. But I guess that makes sense. Infantry anti-tank, you say? We'll probably... I don't want to do that one yet, because we need more factories for that. But let's go ahead and grab some more defense and break through with support weapons 4. I think that'd be pretty good to get. And we'll have it soon. Increased use of assault rifles, huh? The reliable automatic weapons can be used in an environment by all soldiers as a priority for the modern army. Cool. Third hour. God smiles upon us and grants us his boon. Yes. A thousand times yes. You know what? Stop training because, like, I don't want to make hurt that many tanks. So, towards absolute purity, repurpose the gulags. Ooh, free repair. It goes up. We lose some research speed. That's okay. We want to do a new glorious day as fast as possible, though. The Bolsheviks, perfidious Jews that they are, have devised many tools with which to oppress God's chosen people. None were so cruel and dehumanizing as the gulags, prison camps in the forgotten reaches of Russia where countless millions were sent to starve or freeze in the death of the name of the revolution. However, their wicked schemes shall be their final undoing. We shall take their precious gulags from them, rounding up the subhuman traitors, and drive them into the depths of their own creations. There they shall toil away until they can die. All to our benefit. Turning the weapons of the enemy against them is of grave danger to one's soul, but is nevertheless a most satisfying thing to do. We get less multi-population, recruitable population factor goes up by 15%, more stability, quite a bit more stability, lose research speed, and free repair goes up by 150%, not bad, but darkest of days. People of Russia, subjects of his, majesty, of his imperial majesty, I speak to you now on this darkest of days, because I know as well of, as well as you that do, that do a great danger lies in our midst. Holy Russia, the sole beacon of God's light in this bit benighted world is imperiled. It has been so far for centuries, but now we stand in the absolute nadir of civilization around us all around us. Threats like the which you cannot imagine are gathering. The Jews and their barbarian puppets, puppets know that we are more vulnerable now than ever. Our great nation has been raped and plundered by the Bolsheviks left in ruins so that a final decisive blow might snuff out the Russian spirit forever. <clears throat> Should we allow this to happen, all creation shall fall into the clutches of the Jew with no one to save it. But I, blessed regent of the Holy Russian Empire, will stand firm. Russia is not yet lost, my brothers. She is bruised and bloody and still lives. Her salvation is still within reach. Standing with me, brave Russians, stand for the motherland, for the rightful Tsarevich, for the Lord God. Take up arms as your ancestors did and cleanse our lands, just as Joshua slept in Canaan and exterminated the monstrous heathens who polluted it. We must scourge Russia clean of the Jew, the barbarian, and the infidel. Hail Russia, hail the Tsarevich, hail the Lord, raise the banners high and strike down his foes. Kill the subhumans, free our people. Oh crap. Uh, oh, I can't I can't slow it down. Please don't tell me we're at four yet. We're not at four yet, which is good. Mm, I I really want to try helicopters. Let's get some engines going. 
There we go. It's gonna cost us quite a bit. Go down to two then. We don't even have enough artillery yet. Wow. You know, let's go to one. Oh, let's go to one. Actually, this takes quite a bit to make as well, so. And I'm gonna keep enough on planes just because planes are so good to use, so. If I got rid of the planes, that would not be very good for us. <clears throat> no, can't slow it down yet. Ooh, education. Yes. Just gotta wait for that one. That's for the next one. Anything here yet? 19 days. A ray of light? Received $10 million in fees. No, I'm gonna do this one. A harsh glare. Oh, wait. The clock slows down. Good. The region's people need to know collaborators or studios to help bear their burden. Russia's always stood by itself, a lone tree standing and defying against ill winds. Our virtues and strength are all we need to triumph over the subhumans. We shall prove it. Jews, Tartars, Kalmyks, Komi, Udmurt, Barats. None are a match for the iron well of the Russians. They will be rounded up, incarcerated, and exterminated down to the last other mellowing demonic spawn. So they may question our right to slaughter millions. Those who understand and realize that we have no right to let them live. Ooh. It's kind of, uh, we're getting a little crazy here. But it wouldn't be TNO if we weren't a little crazy. And 90%, that's not high enough, is it? Well, everywhere else is pretty bad as well, so. Ooh, 80%. Uh, if we have to. 2020, 20, 20, 14, not bad. Debt is but a number. Nice. Only 11 billion in terms of annual deficit. Even construction doesn't match our civilian spending. Which, hopefully, with poverty decreasing. We should do pretty well with that. Let's see. We'll get that. Uh, which one will we get done soon? Oh, we'll get uh, the nascent industrial base done soon, which is okay. Doesn't really help us that much, so. Yeah. Which will get more efficiency gain, research uh, retention, stuff like that. Alright. If we don't boost it up anymore. Uh, what's our construction like? One, two, three. Yeah, I'm, I'm done boosting up civilian spending. I'm not going to slash it. But I'm done boosting it for now. Even though we get less, technically less political power. That's kind of okay. Consider destiny. Ooh. I think that's the one we probably want. Yeah, let's go and do that one. It's only 15, so. I love that we always get general entries with this. So, whereas I reigned over many nations and brought, had brought all the world under my dominion, I was not willing to abuse the greatness of my power, but to govern my subjects with clemency and lenity, that they may live quietly without any terror and might enjoy peace, which is desired by all men. Esther, 13.2. Sturm of... Stromoloki performance is faltering. They have reported only 34, almost 3,500 confirmed kills in the past month. One knows the numbers that one sees amidst the sky and that there remains many more undesirables yet to be removed. That Tsarevich Alexei's foremost defenders have come or become so indolent and ineffective is most concerning. Spare the rod, spoil the child, so it is often said. And are we not all God's children? Disciplinary measures will be intensified and carried out more regularly. Decimation comes to mind. Civilian anti-Jew measures have been more fruitful. Promises of financial reward are for a powerful incentive. German methods at work, once more, effective as ever. The search for Tsarevich Alexei proceeds as usual. Leads are scarce. Only I can perceive the scheme, and it is difficult to communicate its messages to lesser men. Still, hope yet lives. My hand is steady, my mind is intact, I am not insane. Crud. Uh, we got political power from that, huh? More research facilities? Sure, why not? So the third hour? Good. A hosh glare. Bounties on parasites. The region, blessed as he may be, is not possessed of the Lord's omnipresence. Though he wishes it were not so, he cannot spare the time to be directly involved in the righteous purgation of our lands, and his steed loyal servants must act, but there is a distinct shortage of such individuals. The commoners must be encouraged to serve him, so that they are prepared to do the same for the Tsarevich. For this to happen, they must be convinced of the necessity of our ideals. The fastest way to a man's heart is by satisfying his material needs, and Russia has so, so many people in dire need. Perhaps incentivizing the involvement in a radical holy war would suffice, backed up by necessary reminders of the importance of his mission. After all, he who allows a subhuman to live shares in the crime of his, of his existence. Of his existence. My apologies. I really apologize for this. Man, my words. I am slurring my speech. I guess I am subhuman. Oh my goodness. 1.4a. That's not bad. 1.48. Even though we're not boosting political power with civilian budgets, so be it. And eventually, I will slash civilian spending. I will slash construction spending more and more and more and more. So, it's just a matter of time. Actually, it's looking a little better. Tanks are not looking that great. IFVs, we could probably get rid of them. Too bad we can't sell them. That'd be kind of cool. But, you know, whatever. Plane-wise, let's see. Early fighters, don't mind if we do. You know what? I will train you guys. I almost never train them. But you know what? I think we can this time. So we're pretty good. We've slowed down the 
clockwork stuff for now. Which is good. And we're we're really boosting up our society here. We live in a we live in a society, I guess we could say. A glorious new day. What we've accomplished here on the West is only the beginning. From this old heartland of the Empire, the light of our Lord and his earthly representative, Tsarevich Alexei, will shine forth. Soon it shall illuminate all of Russia. From Melorossia to Vladivostok, the subhumans will be utterly destroyed and their pure race will never again threatened by their ilk. Yet, but not yet. There's so much more to do. So many evils to vanquish and souls to save. Beyond our borders, false claimants to the rulership of Russia send forth their armies to oppose us. Foolishly, they have dismissed our claim to divine sponsorship, refusing to even acknowledge the truth of the Tsarevich existence. They are wrong, of course, and he will know it once, or they will know it once we cast them into hell and establish an eternal, holy Russian empire across the entity of its rightful lands. Medical power. We remove the current administrative strain. Exert influence in the southern Urals. That might make us go to war with these guys, but yeah, we wept. You said they were here this morning, someone yelled, their voice barely muffled by the thin floorboards. You were trying to F me, Andre. Beneath his tone, huddled on the dirt, Abraham held Lydia close and gritted his teeth to stop them from chattering. Levi was curled up by his feet, quiet as a mouse. Their boy developed a talent for hiding at least. Above them, he heard the loud footsteps as one of the men closed the distance to his partner. F off, Simeon, came another voice, harsh and guttural. I saw them come home half an hour ago. You must have tipped them off when you were looking through the window. They probably bolted out the back when they saw you. Back door still bolted from the inside, Dickhead. No, they must have gone out the front when I was round the side window. Where were you where you were supposed to watch? There was a scuffle of boots on wood, and suddenly suddenly the second voice was filled with fear. What the heck, Simeon? Put it down. <clears throat> you let them get away. It's my it's my booty on the line now, they're both gonna hang us as sympathizers. They pay you for it, you effing rat. Simeon, don't! There's a crack of gunfire and the thud of a body hitting the floor. <clears throat> uh, Jew lover growled Andre, striding out of the house and slamming the door behind him. Abram gently pressed his hand to the trap door above him and pushed it open, lifting the rug above it. Peering out into the bedroom, he saw a large body lying in a pool of spread, spreading blood. Clambering out, he offered a hand to his wife and son. They had a ride to catch out of Russia. Come, Vladimir. Or, come, Vladimir will be waiting. Oh, crap, no. No, 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 no. Stop striking that clock. It struck the fourth hour, slowly slipping forwards. No, 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 no. Journal entry. A wise heart shall acquire profit, shall acquire knowledge. And the ear of the wise seeketh instruction. Proverbs 18.15. Does the soul reside within the city or the clay of the body? Or is there some means by which an, an immaterial spirit might interfere with, interface with flesh? I apologize once again. My pronunciations are just off in this episode. Science has dug deep into the physical nature of humanity, but no answers yet present themselves. When I resided in Berlin, I tell of many developments in psychology and the philosophy of mind. But there's a rub. There's always a but. The developments were theoretical, or speculative, or devised by a Jew. I suspect the latter is the case throughout the world of academia. For my part, I would theorize that the question of soul, mind, body, interactions remain forever unsolved. I have my own idea. That the brain contains some kind of lat lattice that serves as a conduit for the soul's energies but I can never prove or disprove it. Like those esteemed academics, I can only ponder. The difference between us, of course, is that I would never enter such a passive lay about profession. Men of letters and wisdom are necessary, but troublesome. The whispers of Zionist propaganda echo loudly in the halls of learning. Was it not from academia that Bolshevism first sprang rather than the proletariat? I worry for the future of Russia's youth. Should we fail to root out the rot before building or rebuilding our academic tradition? A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Oof. Only 19 billion in debt. That is all. Where we're going, we won't. We won't really care too much. One, two, three, four. No, no. no. Keep building. Keep building. Keep building. If we must do 80% Soviet, uh, yeah, I'll do it here first because there's less tiles here. And actually, we're building up. Oh, we're building up that tile too. Good. <clears throat> Fourth hour, fighting the black market. Uh, how is that going? Actually, moderate. Not the luxury goods. This one. <clears throat> a glorious new day. Tear down their failures and disappointment will hurt. So we're going to rush down this way probably. Fill the Imperial Treasury. Virtuous Education. Oh, maybe we'll do this one. Yeah, we'll do that one. Virtuous Education. Last but not least of our concerns are the minds of our children. The youths of Russia have been deprived of a proper education by the Judeo-Bolshevik oppression. Truly, the elders of Zion know no limits to their dis scheme or demented schemes. The region sees their plight and has heard their cries for help. Now the children of Russia shall have what they need, proper education, from cradle to grave, formulated by the region himself for maximum efficiency. It is only right for them to learn every minutia necessary, that they might correctly serve the Tsarevich when he ascends to the throne. Tended properly, he will never have to hear unwanted questions from a rowdy and ill-minded populace. The wrong kind of question. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, we're focusing on a new, a glorious new day. Which is fine with me. 
Ah, a glorious new day, an infinite devil machine. The streets are quiet, orderly cold. <clears throat> People are silently shuffling ar along the usual route to their assigned tasks. Guard to stood on every corner and outside every building, glaring upon the masses with rifles shouldered and bayonets polished. The commoners lower their, heads, their eyes as they pass the watchmen, never daring to challenge their icy gaze. When men worked, <clears throat> they did so without idle chatter, the relaxed movements on the content of the content. They were rigid, nervous, mechanical. There was no longer room for mistakes. A dropped box, a broken tool, all were out of line. All were inadmissible errors. Remedied with a guilty man's sudden disappearance and replacement by somebody more deserving of his role. Dissent was a forgotten word. Not even the bravest dared to ask uninvited questions or whisper grim secrets to the families in the dead of night. The Okhrana had made it known that anyone, from the lowliest workers to the nobility, was safe from a knock on the door and a five-minute trial ending before a blood-spattered wall. As the regent looked down upon his city from the balcony of his palace, his heart was at last tranquil. This incarnation of the Empire was not a decrepit old man, blow bloated with decay. It was a single glorious machine, a firm hand on the levers, a gentle turning of the dial, and it would move as he willed. As the tale of history unfolded according to God's design, so too did the, the cogs of Russia by the regent's hand. And the gears keep turning. No, no, no. Ooh, exert influence in southern years. Yes, we must well start doing that. Still the fourth hour. Oh, God. The race for the Urals. <clears throat> to our east lay the great Ural Mountains. The traditional border between Europe and Asia, this great mountain range is critically important to our unification ambitions. In the aftermath of the West Russian War and the collapse of the WRRF, the region was left bereft of any central authority. Many communes and villages looked to either the city of Orenburg or the soldiers of the Ural League for protection. Our intelligence reports that others fell under the sway of the NKVD, Remnant, and Magnogorsk, or were sacked by Dilvanga's brigade. The rise in tension after the end of the German terror bombing resulted in conflicts that have led to the region's current power structure. The rules present both an opportunity as well as a threat to our nation. Seizing the area's resources and population would be a great boon to our cause. However, on the far side of the Urals, another unified state claims its legitimacy as a true Russian government. Were this opponent to capture the Urals, they would be able to station troops on our side of the mountain range, threatening our eastern provinces. We must thus assert our prominence in the region through any way necessary. Our diplomats and generals have prepared an array of tools to bring the Urals into our sphere of interest. It's projected that the side with the best combination of prestige, diplomatic success, and military intimidation will be able to be the first to tip over the local elites into accepting unification. With a diplomatic option to fail, military intervention remains an option, an option with that our eastern rivals are not likely to accept easily. The race of the Urals is upon us. We will triumph over our Siberian rebels and integrate another part of shattered Russia to our growing nation. A new theater. And journal entry. Thou art spent with foolish labor. Both thou and this people that is with thee. The business is above thy strength. Thou alone cannot canst not bear it. Exodus 1818. Can the working man ever truly be liberated from Bolshevism? It seems that there is something about his nature that makes him inherently vulnerable to the charms. Even the so-called social democratic system, he always agitates for more. More money, more free time, more benefits. He is never satisfied as long as, long as he possesses a democratic voice. There are two solutions to this problem of the working man's greed. The first is to place him in charge of the state, to accept Bolshevik rule. Obviously, obviously this is a preposterous, not to mention utterly unthinkable to any good Russian. The second is to do precisely the opposite of what he desires, to crush his autonomy, to diminish his wages, to take away his rights. The second solution would appear counterintuitive at first, but has enjoyed great success in Germany. Why is this? I suspect it is because the working man has rebellion in his blood. Perhaps this is a trait inherited from peasant ancestry. That would explain why rebellions in recent centuries have usually emerged from below rather than from the nobility. Regardless, it is clear that to truly liberate the working man's spirit, he must be clear, or that he must be broken and forced to bow to his betters. If he cannot see any means of ascending beyond his appointed station, his ambition will be curtailed. Applying on a grand scale, perhaps submissiveness can be bred back into the lower classes, so that the Bolsheviks might never again find an audience amongst the commoners. Would Christ approve of eugenics? Maybe. Fifth hour. Oh, God, no. How strong are these guys? Did they make any more divisions? They made a few more divisions. How close are we to deploy more? If we go to war with these guys, we just do not have enough divisions to get rid of these guys. How strong are they? Eh, they're probably 20 combat with. This infantry is looking not weak at all. What the heck? Hold on. That division probably is a mixture. Oh, man, they're looking actually pretty darn strong. We need more divisions. I'm going to deploy you guys immediately first, though. I'm going to train you guys first, because I want to take these guys out, but I don't think we're strong enough to do this. Uh, slow down time. Journal entry. And let the fear and dread of you be upon all the beasts of the earth, and let all the fowls of the air, all that move upon the earth, all the fish of the sea are delivered at your hands. Genesis 9-2. So, Avish Alexei, where are you? Blessed child, can you hear my prayers? I've done so much in your name. I've defied the Jews. <clears throat> 
in the Bolsheviks, the force of hell itself. How many lives of humans, traitors, heathens have I crushed under the iron heel of the Regency? How many sacrifices have I piled up on the altar? I truly do not know. Please, my blessed prince, if you will not hear my voice, then see my words. See them, and know that your people are ready for you. Your throne stands glided and draped in pure purple cloth. For you to assume power and rule, holy Russia and perpetuity. Please don't leave us alone here. Please, don't let this all be for nothing. And we shall conclude today's episode on that event. <clears throat> I apologize once again for my pronunciation of words and my stuttering. If uh, you enjoyed the video, though, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we will probably go to war with the heroes and struggle greatly. Thanks for watching, though, and have a great rest of your day.